Hi everybody, my name is Mons from CDH Television, the editor behind this YouTube channel. I'm actually up there in the corner and we were recording our normal intro and after when I looked at it, I discovered that I actually forgot to turn on my that microphone over there. So there was no audio coming from me, that person over there, but there were audio from all other free people. I wasn't able to really to get it into correction because I'm like asking questions and you're asking answering those questions and you can't hear it in the video so I decided to basically introduce the video this way and in the future I'm gonna make sure to turn on the microphone and in any case here we are I'm playing Kenriff wheel the deck ID behind that deck is to wheel turn one or turn two or just to get into a game of odd knots or fastest early in the game Pontus is playing a similar turbo deck with Lurus as the companion and Jensen as the commander where he's basically going for Undul Breach, Hermit Druid, Fasus Oracle combos and such. Then we have Rhetoric with us down there who's playing Kodama Sakashima and also by the way that's the guy who's actually making the song you're listening to right now so a big shout out to Rhetoric down there in the corner. With us we also have Cortes who is a big Vanifar player that have developed Vanifar quite a lot and with that let's not drag out this little intro for too long let's jump into opening hands all right so we have city of traitors we have a turn to wheel wheel of fortune into second wheel of echo of eons we're the starting player so we can kind of wreck a little bit of havoc here vamp tutor into wheel of fortune is that good enough we got fat has one image to the grave we like that with our commander yeah i think that's good enough it's uh, we can do better but to turn two wheel is it's fine i'm a little bit scared like this is the first trial out example in reality so i'm gonna stick with this first seven going second the turn one esper sentinel console from tutor and ram this looks pretty good <laughs> Not gonna lie, uh, yeah, turn one Esper Sentinel. This hand actually became awkward as soon as I had to figure out what card to exile. Because the Esper Sentinel, while being great, does make this a bit awkward because the goal would be to go for return to Druid. So they can just kill me if I go for this line. I can also be smart. I think that's a really good choice. I'm, a, I'm gonna be smart. This is a great hand. I need to get good at this game. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is a turn one Hermit and a turn two win. Um, I think that's pretty good and I will go for that. It's a bit risky because I have to cast the Asper Sentinel to have a creature to sack, but I think that's still worth it. And uh, yeah, so I'll go for turn one Hermit and hopefully I win off that. A great key. Hey everybody, what's up? Let me go ahead and see what we get here. We are looking for lots of fast mana. Got a time twister, four lands and a time twister. I mean, it would create some disruptions, so that might be good for us. Gives us a fresh hand, it might disrupt what everybody else is doing, but also could be like a terrible hand later on if we do that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mulligan. I'm going to see if I can get a little bit more fast mana. But we didn't get really anything. <laughs> so we'll get started. So let's go again. We got an Ancient Tomb, an Elvish Mystic, and a Nykthos. Oh, man. It's a little sad. I think that we... Do we have to go to five? We have to go to five. I think we do. Okay. So this is much better. Um, we got the Micromancer so we can grab something pretty sweet, tasty with it. Crop rotation something like that. Um, we have to pitch two. So I think what we'll do is, and I'm going to pitch yeah, our Micromancer and uh, an island. Awesome. Good to go. We got our Shanky Boy Heartbreaker, which isn't a good thing to have in our starting hand. Uh, this is a move 100%. Uh, the hand is way too slow and like the only thing we're doing. Or well, the, the, there is a world where we could cast Mana Drain and try to hard cost Heartbreaker, but that's not a good game plan in this deck. So I'm going to move this. This looks a lot better. It's still not like super fast. We have no uh, mana rocks, no Cheerios, uh, but it's it's still a key. Like I wouldn't pass this hand. I have a pregame. I'll put in this gemstone caverns, exiling a demonic consultation. All right, I will begin the game. I will draw a card for turn. So that turned great. I'm really happy about that. So we're gonna swap. We're just gonna do turn one fish with the city of traitors and fellower stone instead. This is a great top deck. Uh, a little bit sad because I kind of want to showcase this deck's strategy. Like I really want to do that wheel here. But I guess we're playing normal CDH as CDH was intended. I'm gonna play the city of traitors. 
tap it for two colorless. I'm gonna cast this Fellower Stone with the City of Traitors. Tap it. And then I'm gonna cast a Mystic Remora. Fish! Turn one fish! And I pass. I have a response to fish. No, you don't. I will cast an amp tutor. You can have your fish. That's good. Sadly. Yeah, that's good. That's fine. Yeah, you can have your amp tutor. No response. No response. Pass. I will find this card and put it on top. And I end my turn. Go to my turn. Mr. Rainforest, land for turn. I will fetch. Finding an underground sea. I will tap two to cast the Hermitrude. Jeez, Pontus. It is indeed a card. Uh, then I'll pass the turn. Okay. This is scary. All right, so this turn I'm going to go ahead and draw. And what I can do is probably get out Kalini Gem this turn, which is good, because if I can get City Terrors back, then I can cast Kadama on the second turn. So this might be good. But Pontus has that Hermit Druid, so he's scary already. Let's see how it goes. Mana uh, City of Traders. You're going to be getting a couple of fish. Sorry, guys. City of Traders. I'm going to tap for four. I'll play Kalini Gem or Kalhini Gem. I will return this to my hands. I'm going to then pay, put two in the pool to cast Elvish Mystic. Other than that, I've got three cards in hand. I'll go ahead and pass turn. I'll take my turn. So uh, I draw a card. I'll play this Windswap Teeth and crack it for a Tropical Island. I'll play this, this uh, Boreal Druid and I'll pass. I'm going to. Go to my turn and untap. I'm gonna tap City of Traitors to pay for my fish. Draw a card for turn. That kind of solves it too. I'm gonna play Polluted Delta, sacrifice City of Traitors, then sacrifice Polluted Delta. I'm founding an underground sea. Then I'm tapping to pass. I pass as well. Demonic Tutor resolves. The Hermit has done nothing, nothing wrong. He hasn't tapped yet. So I'm finding a Force of Will with my Demonic Tutor because that's the only spell that can interact more or less against this hermit druid so i'm gonna pass turn here and basically force of will his dread return hopefully he doesn't have an interaction i do like this situation because i have a noxus revival and i could basically have double force of wills if we go into a counter war also if we go into a counter war my fish will be fed so even though i'm losing hand size to force of will i will still like get some value out of this. Take my turn. So Mon's tutoring here is really scary. If he gets a Noxus Revival, he will just blow me out and I have no response for that. Uh, which is not a good thing, <laughs> in my opinion, uh, because I don't want to lose. But I kind of think he might have gotten a counter spell. And I drew a dork, so this line becomes less risky. And I have the Memory's Journey to fall back on. And even if he gets Noxious Rival, I still have Thassa Circle on my next turn. So the only real card I would be afraid of is a Mind Break Trap. I don't think Mons runs Mind Break Trap. I might be wrong, I might be blown out here, but I think I just win here. I think there's no good alternative for Mons to stop me. I look forward to getting blown out, but I will go for it anyways this turn. I will will cast a Lion's Eye Diamond. You may draw Mons. I will cast a Death Rite Shaman. You may not draw off this one because it's a creature. I will tap the Hermit Druid. And responses to me tapping the Hermit Druid. I pass. I have no response to you activating Hermit Druid. Go for it. I will mill my deck. I will have a Narcomiba trigger to put it into play. Is this okay? I. Oh my god, yes! Yes, I think I have you. Oh my god, I think I have you. <laughs> is that a trigger? Yeah, that's a trigger. Okay, so of course it Narcomiba, is. trigger on the stack, it's still in the grave. I, this this is some next level stuff, guys. I'm gonna cause Noxious Revival. <laughs> I'm gonna target your Malevolent Hermit, strangely. So you have a counter spell as well. And I'm gonna explain to the entire table. You see, Pontus <laughs> has a Lion's Eye Diamond, and I know that there's a Malevolent Hermit, or Malevolent Geist, I think it's called, in Pontus' grave that is making it impossible for us to counterspell his spells. So if I Noxus Revival that to the top of his library, he we remove his uh, Grand Abolisher, basically. If I target his Fasas Oracle, well, that bad, because then he will draw that next turn. If I target his Dread Return, that's actually a viable thing to do when I think about it. I could target Dread Return, but I'm not targeting Dread Return. I am... Uh, wait, wait a minute, is it better to target Dread Return here? Hmm, no, it won't matter. No, I'm targeting your male level and... Geist, I think. Okay, that's Geist goes to the top of my library. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, I'll sacrifice these three to cast Dread Return, targeting Tassa Circle. So the reason why I wanted you to... Uh, 
at least kind of go for it is because I get a card at least. Mm -hmm. Force of Will pitching Echo of Eons. Okay, Dread Return is countered. Goes to exile. Oracle goes to graveyard. And one mana short. I'll just pass. Pontus, do you still have that spell that can shuffle the cards back into your library, right? Yeah, otherwise I would never doubt this. Yeah. So you, you have Underwood Breach and uh, Lion's Head Diamond and Brain Freeze in your, somewhere in their deck. And I, you can basically win next turn, correct? Yeah. Cool. Carry on. How many cards are in your uh, li are in, in your library right now? One. Draw a card. We'll do City of Traders. Mana Crypts. City of Traders. I will cast Kadama. I'm going to pass turn. Yep. If, if that's good, I'll pass. Yep. I'll take my turn. One tap draw. So knowing that Pontus is going to attempt the win next turn, like the responsible thing is to play a land and hold up Fierce Guardianship. Uh, the problem with that is that I'm not de developing any board state at all. So I'm basically just banking on uh, that Mons or Rhetoric has anything, uh, or, or at least feeds Mons with Secret more. So I tap these uh, for a Crashing Drawbridge. I play oh, this, yeah. get this Cradle. I tap it for two green uh, to cost three wizards. Mons you can draw. You don't have to feed Mons. I'm dealt with, okay? You're not dealt with. <laughs> I, I'm okay with you thinking I'm dealt with though. I'm gonna shortcut it uh, and go grab a basic forest and cast this Arbor Elf and then I'm done. Past few months. Go to my turn. Untap. Pay for fish. Draw a card. So Pontus is going to basically try to win with Anduil Breach on his next turn by first shuffling back some cards from his deck into his... Uh, from his grave into his deck. And then basically just Anduil Breach, Lion's Diamond, Brain Freeze and win. Thing is, I have a fish. And we can draw cards with that. And in my deck I have a Force of Vigor. I also have a Vamp Tutor, so we can manipulate things here. But I am a little bit scared of that Kodama. If we deal with Pontus, Kodama will still do his Sakashima Kodama thing. And I don't really have a good answer for that. Except the answer is drawing cards with fish. So what we're just gonna do is put Command Tower into play and pass the turn being ready against Pontus with the Vamp Tutor. I will go to my turn and be very surprised by my draw. <laughs> So we don't have a lot of uh, alternatives here. We can just go for it over and over again, and that's kind of our best play. Uh, our hand does nothing, so cracking LED here to cast Evince is the most safe play, because then in my next upkeep, I can then flash back the memory's journey to have a extra try at my next turn. I put myself down this hole, and I have to dig myself up, hopefully. I will tap two, sack Lion's Eye Diamond, discarding Hermit, Springleaf Drum, and the Esper Sentinel, which is pretty scary with no library. To flashback Savin's reclamation targeting Underworld Breach. I have a fish trigger on the stack that I choose to put on the stack if I want to. In response to that, I will cast my Vamp Tutor. No response. Yeah, no response to the Vamp Tutor. I'll pass on it. Vamp Tutor resolves. I will put a mysterious card on top of my library. And now I'm sending the option over to you, Pontus, to pay for the fish or let me draw a card. I cannot pay. And in response to your Savine's reclamation, I'm casting Force of Negation, pitching Phantasmal Image to it. Sending uh, Savine's reclamation into exile if it resolves. I have no response. Savine's is exiled. And I will pass the turn. So a card that's been going in and out of the deck, and I think this game really exemplifies why I should run it, is Priest of Hellrites, which you can see here. Uh, because it has, uh, has Unearth for 5, which is not casting a spell. And then you can tap it, sacrifice it, and reanimate the thing. This card should probably in this, be in the stick. It's been going in and out, and I am now sold on it. Also, I really want to stress that I really hate these companion changes. I know that normal formats, that's not Commander and Busted, needed these changes, but could you please let me cast Lurus for three? Lurus for six hurts so bad, I don't want to live here anymore. Okay, so this happens every once in a while with this deck when I play it. Um, people will fight out for a bit and then you'll try to come in for the scoop. So again, slow growth like trees. You gotta be really patient when you play this deck. Um, it can always go bad, who knows, but we'll see what they end up. Untap, upkeep. Make two blue, two with Steady of Traders. We'll cast Sakashima. Any response to that? Pass on Sakashima. I pass on Sakashima too. I am hellbent. There's a Kadama trigger from Sakashima, so I can put something onto the battlefields. Sakashima will become a copy of Kadama, so I can put a six drop into play as a result. Kadama trigger, we will do Spellseeker, and then we've got a Sakashima trigger and Spellseeker at the same time, so what I'll do is uh, go find something from Spellseeker first. Summer's Pact, that's still 
still holding uh, while well, this trigger for Sakashima is still on the stack, I'm going to cast Summoner's Pact. I have uh, no response to Summoner's Pact. Carry on. Carry on. All right. All right. So it's Tireless Provisioner. So again, with Sakashima on the stack, I will uh, Sakashima, Sakadama's trigger. I will put Tireless Provisioner onto the battlefields. All right. So then I have a Kudama trigger and I will get, we'll put under the battlefields uh, Trinket Mage. Yeah. So we're going to get, let's just get Expedition Map for now. Boom. Into hand, Expedition Map. I grab that. Um, I'm going to do Obro Plate Palace of the Clouds. So there is a Sakadama trigger. What I'll do is, in response to that, tap it, put it back to my hands. So I've got blue, I will make a treasure. And I'm gonna do this a million times. Um, just keep returning it back to my hand, tap it. So what I do is Obro uh, Palace of the Clouds comes into the battlefield. There's a trigger from Tireless Provisioner and Sakadama or Kadama. I can tap it, return it to my hand. I get a treasure every time it enters the battlefield and I can tap it for one blue, but I'm just using that to return it to tan. So every time I'm making a treasure, I can do that a number of times, finite number of times. And then I can also make clues with Tyrus Provisioner here. What I can do is draw pretty much everything in my deck and get, you know, a massive amount of mana, try to cast Finale Devastation and kill everybody as a result. We get um, tons of mana and tons of clues. We crack them to draw most of our deck, if not all of it, casting Finale Devastation. Uh, fish trigger, do you pay the four? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I have no response to Final Devastation X equal infinite. And that's how nature always wins. GG's.